back to a new week of what's for dinner. I'm super excited to share these meals with you this week just because they are all so simple but yet so delicious. So I love simple recipes but I feel like a lot of times they're just you know lacking in flavor but all of these recipes that I'm creating today are all so flavorful and yummy but yet so delicious. Anyways I don't know about you but my life has been like so busy recently. I feel like my to-do list has been like this long and just getting longer. So that's why I'm sharing some simple recipes with you. But as always, if you are new here, I'd love to have you over at my channel. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video. But let's get on to making some meals. To get us started off this week, I made some crispy honey lemon chicken and this one is so good. So to begin in my saucepan, I'm just adding in about half a cup of some canola oil and I'm letting that heat up. So now over here, I have a pound of chicken breast cut into one inch chunks. You could also use chicken thighs if that's what you prefer. And then I'm just coating it with one third cup of cornstarch just so all of that chicken is coated nicely. Now that my oil is completely hot, I just placed the chicken in there and then I flipped it at the halfway point and you know, just let it cook all the way through. While that chicken is cooking, we're gonna begin on the sauce and all the sauce is is a half a cup of some water followed by a tablespoon of cornstarch and I just whisked that to combine. And then the next thing I'm gonna be adding is two tablespoons of soy sauce. I use the low sodium soy sauce just because that's what I had on hand. And then I'm gonna be adding a half a cup of honey followed by a half of a lemon juiced. You could also use a zest of one large lemon but as we were moving, I totally lost my zester and I also lost my cheese grater. I just really don't know where they went, but anyways, that is what I did. Now that my chicken is completely cooked, I just removed it from my pan and I put it on a plate with some paper towel to absorb some of the oil. You could also just put it on a drying rack or you know like a cookie sheet type of thing and then I removed the oil from the pan and now I'm adding in two cloves of garlic followed by a half of a teaspoon of some of this ginger. This is just you know the dried ginger. You could use some fresh ginger and that would be a lot better but I always forget to buy ginger at my grocery store but I just mixed that together until the garlic became fragrant and then I added back in our chicken and I just tossed it to coat in those two ingredients. Now I'm just gonna be adding in our sauce and I'm gonna stir everything together. You're gonna to eventually get your sauce thick. It took me about three to five minutes to get my sauce thick. Just keep in mind that the chicken is already cooked through so all you're wanting to do is thicken up your sauce. Here's my plate all plated up. I just served it on top of a bed of white rice and some steamed broccoli on the side. I just sprinkled it with some sesame seeds and some chives and some lemon pieces. This was such a good meal. It was absolutely delicious. I will be making it again. And then here's Brinley's little plate. I thought you might enjoy seeing what she ate. For this night's dinner, I just made some spinach stuffed shells. So to begin into a large pot with some boiling water, I'm adding about 20 shells in there. I made sure these shells weren't broken. Right here I have two 10 ounce bags of frozen spinach. These bags of spinach are no longer frozen. I left them on my countertop to thaw out for about two hours before I made this dish, but I just added it to this towel with a bowl under it, and then I'm gonna be taking out the liquid. So this is how you remove the liquid from your spinach, if you were ever wondering. You just squeeze the towel as hard as you possibly can, and that removes all of the water in it. You really don't want any water left while you are making your stuffed shells, or it won't turn out great. If you know me, you know I love fresh basil, so I just picked about five of these fresh basil leaves from my basil plant. Yes, I have a basil plant. I do suggest buying a basil plant. But anyways, I just chopped this up into small pieces. And then moving over here, we're gonna start on our cheese mixture. So I have a 15 ounce 
container of ricotta cheese right here. I'm just adding into my large bowl, followed by about a cup and a half of some mozzarella cheese. And then I'm gonna be adding in about a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then for our seasonings, I'm adding in a half a teaspoon of some garlic powder along with salt and then one egg. And then I'm gonna be adding in our fresh basil. And then I'm gonna stir this all together to combine. If you don't have any fresh basil, you could just add a teaspoon of the dried stuff. After I added in our spinach and gave it a really good mixing, I'm going to start on assembling our stuffed shells. So right here I have a 9x13 baking dish and I'm just pouring in some marinara sauce. This is a 24 ounce jar. I probably used about one cup of marinara sauce on the bottom of my 9x13 baking dish just to spread out. And now I'm going to start assembling the shells. So into the shells I'm using a cookie scoop and I'm just going to be using about one scoop and you know stuff in these shells and then on top of our stuffed shells i'm going to be pouring the remainder of our marinara sauce then topping it with some mozzarella cheese along with some parmesan cheese and then you're going to put some aluminum foil on top and bake it into the oven for about 22 minutes and once those 22 minutes are off you're going to take the aluminum foil off and bake it into the oven for an additional 10 minutes Here are the stuffed shells out of the oven. They turned out absolutely delicious. They were so, so good. I just served it alongside of a side salad and this was a great meatless meal. For this nice dinner, we made some Instant Pot white chicken chili. I know it's the summertime, but I could really eat white chicken chili all year round. It's just so, so yummy. So we're gonna begin by cooking up our chicken. I'm using two chicken breasts and I poured a cup of water at the bottom of my Instant Pot and I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of some salt and pepper. I did use my trivet for this. And then here is Brinley. She was just going wild on that night for some reason. She was just being so goofy and silly and trying to talk. It was really the cutest thing ever. But anyways, I just put the lid on this and cooked it for about 20 minutes. Here is my chicken all cooked up. Of course, cooking times vary because my chicken was frozen. So just, you know, adjust the cooking time depending on your chicken. And anyways, I just shredded it up and now I'm just adding in my cream cheese. It was only about four ounces of cream cheese and I did cut it into small cubes. I believe it cooks the cream cheese better like that. And then I added in my 15 ounce can of some pinto beans along with great northern beans. They were drained and rinsed. And then I added in my 15 ounce can of creamed corn along with my cup of water, cup of salsa, and then I'm adding in my ranch dressing. This is just a third cup of that. You're also going to be adding in your seasonings, which is just cayenne pepper, and then chili powder, a teaspoon of chili powder, and then only a pinch of cayenne. And then I'm adding in some onion powder and some garlic powder, and then a fourth a cup of some milk. I gave this a stir and put it on high pressure for about 20 minutes. Here it is out of the Instant Pot. I really did give it a good whisking just so that I was able to break down the cream cheese because it was still kind of in chunks. You really want it whisked well. And then here is my pot of soup all plated up. I served it on top with some cherry tomatoes, sour cream, lime cheese. This was so, so good. I love this recipe. It was one of my favorites. For this super simple dinner, I just made a BLT alongside of some homemade pasta salad. So to begin, we're gonna start with the pasta salad because it has to chill first. So I'm just pouring about a quarter of that box of pasta into my boiling water, and now I'm gonna start chopping up the vegetables and you know the stuff that goes in the pasta salad. So I'm using some pepperoni, some salami, some purple onion along with some olives and some sharp cheddar cheese and some cherry tomatoes. You know, I kind of added in whatever I had in my fridge, you know, super simple. Once my pasta salad was cooked, I just let it cool in a strainer under some cold water for a while until it was no longer hot. 
And now I'm just adding in all of the stuff that goes in the pasta salad, you know, like the veggies and the stuff we just chopped up. For the dressing, I'm using this Olive Garden light Italian dressing. This is my favorite of all time to go on pasta salads just because it is just so simple. You take it out of the fridge, pour it on, and I just pour it to my liking. I poured about a half a cup on that day just because I wanted a little bit more. And then I'm adding about a fourth a cup of some Parmesan cheese and I stirred this together and I let it chill in my fridge for about two hours. You know, for the bacon, I decided to cook it in the oven on this day just because everybody keeps telling me to cook my bacon in the oven, so that's what I did. I just lined my cookie sheet with a little bit of aluminum foil, and then I put in my oven-safe cookie rack into that pan, and now I'm going to put the bacon on top. I do know I could just put the bacon on the pan, but I wanted to cook it on the cookie sheet just because if you cook it on the cookie sheet, the Grease is likely to fall down and not just sit on the bacon while it is cooking. Now that our bacon is cooked, we're going to begin assembling our BLTs, you know. Everybody knows how to assemble a BLT, but I just used some mayonnaise along with some cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes have been good in my store recently, and I just added some salt and pepper on top of those, and then I'm just putting some iceberg lettuce on along with my bacon, and that is seriously it. I like BLTs with avocado too, that makes them yummy, and then here's my plate all plated up with the pasta salad. That pasta salad came out perfect, and you know, a BLT is just the perfect summer meal, and then here is Brinley, goofy as always. For this nice dinner, we're making some double crunch honey garlic chicken breast. And this could have been my favorite meal out of the entire week. This one was so good. So to begin, I'm just beating my three chicken breasts. You want them nice and thin and even in size. I apologize for the shaky filming right now. Now I'm going to start on the egg wash. All the egg wash is is two eggs cracked into a bowl along with about four tablespoons of water and then I'm just going to beat that all together. Now I'm going to begin on the flour mixture. All the flour mixture is is one cup of flour and I am sifting this into my bowl. You don't have to sift it, but I just wanted to. I thought it would make for a better coating. And then I'm adding in my salt. This is just two teaspoons of salt and then my pepper, which is just about a teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm going to be adding in my ground ginger. I added in about a teaspoon of that and then a half a teaspoon of some ground nutmeg and then a teaspoon of thyme. I didn't have any sage on hand, but if you wanted to, you could probably add about a teaspoon of some sage and that would turn out delicious. And then this recipe calls for a teaspoon of some cayenne pepper. You know, cayenne is a little bit spicy, so I just added a little shake of that and then a tablespoon of of some paprika and then I just whisked this all together. Now that I whisked our flour mixture together, I'm actually going to start on the sauce. So for the sauce, all it is is two tablespoons of some olive oil along with three or four cloves of some minced garlic. And then you're going to add a cup of honey, a fourth a cup of soy sauce, low sodium preferred, and then a teaspoon of some ground black pepper. And then you're just going to mix this all together and you're going to bring it up to a simmer for about five to 10 minutes. And then I removed it from the heat and I allowed it to cool completely while I was allowing it to cool. I finished up my chicken. We're going to now begin coating the chicken. So I coated it in the flour mixture first and then brought it over to the egg wash and then back over to the flour mixture. This is a double coated chicken and I just did it until my chicken was all coated. 
Now we're going to begin frying these up. So I just have about half a cup of canola oil in my pan and I just cook these on both sides for about five minutes on each side. The way I knew my oil was hot is I just put a little bit of flour in my pan and if that flour was sizzling, I knew it was at the right temperature. And here I am just flipping it halfway through. Once my chicken has reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees or higher, I removed it from the pan and put it on this wire rack to cool down for a minute. And now here it is all plated up. I just served it on a bed of some white rice and some steamed vegetables on the side. And as you see here, I'm just pouring on some of the sauce that we made up earlier. This sauce was so good. The chicken was a little bit spicy, but that sauce was sweet. So it was kind of, you get the sweet and the spicy. I don't know. It was just like a perfect consistency and taste in my opinion. And I just sprinkled some sesame seeds on top. This dinner was a total hit. Both my husband and myself loved it. For this night's dinner, we made some chicken fried rice, and this recipe is so yummy. To begin, you're gonna wanna cook up one cup of white rice that is uncooked, so it's gonna be about three cups once it is cooked, but you want this to be chilled by the time you go to make it for dinner, so I made this a few hours beforehand in my Instant Pot. Now we're gonna begin dicing up our chicken. This is two chicken breasts that I'm chopping it up into small pieces, but of course use less or more chicken depending on family size. To my saucepan, I'm just adding that diced up chicken into some olive oil. This is a tablespoon of olive oil that I already had hot in my pan, and I'm just gonna be seasoning this with a little bit of some salt and pepper, and you're just gonna to wanna to cook this completely through. Now you see that my chicken is completely cooked. I'm gonna be adding in half of a white onion along with one cup of frozen green beans and then about two cups of some carrots. I did process these carrots in my food processor just so they're a little bit smaller, just mainly for my daughter to eat them better just because I wanted her to get as many vegetables as she can on that night. But anyways, I just cooked those vegetables until they were completely soft. And now I'm just gonna be making a well in the middle of my pan and I'm just going to be adding my two eggs in there and I'm gonna be scrambling them in my pan. I don't know if you guys have ever seen at Chinese restaurants, I guess you could say this is what they do. So that is what I did. Now that our egg is scrambled in with the rest of our ingredients, I'm gonna be adding in my white rice followed by my peas. I'm just adding in a half a cup of some frozen peas just because that's kind of like my daughter's favorite vegetable and then our orange sauce. So this is totally optional. You do not need to add this orange sauce in. You could add a tablespoon of maple syrup or a tablespoon of brown sugar other than this orange sauce, but I did add in three tablespoons of this orange sauce from Panda Express. I just thought it would give it some delicious flavor, and it did, and now I'm just adding in three tablespoons of some soy sauce, and then I'm just going to mix this all together just so everything gets incorporated together and the sauces combine well and everything warms through. Here is my plate all plated up. This turned out so delicious. I just served it on top with some chives and some sesame seeds. I loved this recipe. It tasted so fresh and flavorful and it was packed full of vegetables and it was just really delicious. And that is a wrap of this week's Swiss for dinner. I hope you guys all enjoyed it and got plenty of some meal inspiration. Also, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy despite what's going on in this world right now. Hope you guys are all doing well and I'd love to hear from you guys. I always love chatting with you. But anyways, if you are new here, I'd love to have you over at my channel. So go ahead and subscribe down below the video. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.